We can, yeah. We can start. All right. No one missing. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, February 7th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the clerk do the roll call? Uh, Chairman Harley. Here. Vice Chairman Margiana. Here. Uh, clerk Roberts. Here. Uh, Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Oichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Mr. Homicki. Mr. Dean. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Here. Mr. Silver. Here. My math is correct. There's nine of us, and we can all participate. Um, first item on the agenda is a public hearing, application 1933-17Z, Town of Wethersfield. Derek is going to join us, town engineer seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.3, involving installation of a 12,000-gallon above-ground fuel storage tank. Derek, good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, as stated, my name is Derek Greger. I'm the town engineer. I'm here tonight to present a plan uh, that's for a project located at the physical services garage at 100 Marsh Street. This facility is where uh, existing uh, town vehicles uh, do their fueling. Um, it's very essential to the town because we have a lot of different departments that use it, uh, such as highway department, fire department, police department, EMS, and board of ed vehicles. The reason for the project is we have two existing 6,000 gallon underground storage tanks. One is for diesel fuel, one is for gasoline. By DEEP or Department of Energy Environmental Protection requirements, once the tanks reach an age of 30 years old, they have to be removed from the ground. These two tanks were installed in 1988, so to meet DEEP requirements, the town needs to remove these tanks by the end of the year. The Capital Improvements Advisory Committee for the town has been uh, allocating funds to this project for a number of years with the anticipation that we were going to have to get to this point when they needed to be removed. Um, both those tanks are existing steel single wall tanks. They have cathodic protection systems, which are systems on each tank to slow the deterioration process. Um, just to add to the situation, uh, within the last few months, these tanks, the systems are tested annually. The gasoline tank system failed a few months ago which basically renders our insurance void for that particular tank. Uh, so in addition to the DEP requirements, another uh, consideration town has is the fact that we have an uninsured tank now because of that system failure, um, which is pushing the project along. Um, the proposal is to replace those two underground tanks with one 12,000 gallon above ground storage tank. Uh, that tank will be, have two compartments, two 6,000 gallon compartments for each of the fuel types, the diesel and the gasoline that we have now. Uh, just to orient you to the plan that you see on the screen, uh, this is a view looking from the south north towards the property. Um, the property is located at the east end of town uh, near I-91. As you can see, <clears throat> Marsh Street is located at the top of the screen, north is to, uh, to the top of the sheet. Uh, the existing driveway comes south off of Marsh Street. Um, right now we have an existing employee parking area in this vicinity. And we also have um, some parking along the back of the building. This is the existing administration building. And uh, this is the existing uh, recycling area that exists right now. Excuse me for one second. Ah, there we go. I had updated that plan. It wasn't showing you the latest one. So I wanted to make sure I get you the latest one. So sorry about that. So the same plan. I had added some additional notes to this plan. Uh, so you see this existing staff parking lot here. Um, right now, the existing underground fuel tanks are located immediately behind the administration building in the parking area. What you see here in uh, the orange-yellow box is the approximate location of the new above-ground storage tank that we're proposing. That would serve the existing fueling station, which is located beneath the existing canopy uh, here near the center of the site. Just to give you an overall view, uh, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in detail later, but this whole site is within the floodplain. So to offset the uh, loss in flood storage volume that will, be caught, that, will be, uh, that will be a result of installing the tank, we're proposing to put a small sediment basin at the southeast corner of the site down here to offset that flood storage impact that we will have as part of the project. Just going to the next 
page. That's uh, <clears throat> another aerial view looking straight down at the site. This one shows the property lines, so you get an idea of where the tank sits with respect to the property. <clears throat> it's, it's central, a little bit to the west end of the site. It's about 135 feet from the nearest property line. Right now, this existing canopy has a fueling area beneath it. There's two dispensers. One is for diesel fuel, one is for gasoline. The underground storage tanks feed the, feed the dispensers with underground fuel lines. Uh, those are double walled right now. They have a leak detection system in place. Generally, the site, as far as runoff, runs to the east and to the southeast. Um, as I stated earlier, the entire site's within the floodplain, uh, approximate depth of one feet to 10 feet, depending on where you are in the, on the site. Um, the further south you are, the deeper the floodplain gets. Where we're proposing the tank, near the center of the site, there's about two feet of 100-year floodplain depth at that location. Uh, that floodplain extends on the north side of Marsh Street up into the cemetery here. Um, so there was really no room to install this tank without, without being in the floodplain. One of the concerns with having the underground tanks that we have is the buoyancy factor. Um, if and when this site becomes flooded, being underground, these tanks would have a tendency to want to float up out of the ground and float away. So one of the proposals, uh, what we're proposing to do with the new tank is we're going to install it on, an exist, on a proposed 18-inch thick concrete pad and strap it down with hurricane straps to that pad. Um, that will provide the, uh, the, uh, the enough weight to offset the buoyancy forces that would be caused by two feet of water at a 100-year storm event um, surrounding the tank and prevent it from floating. We are proposing it off to the side of the site uh, along an existing fence line. The tank itself is about 34 feet in length, eight feet in width, uh, about eight foot four inches in height. So it's fairly large. And as I stated earlier, this is uh, over on this side of the site where you come in is the, the main or the formal staff parking. As you can see in the aerial photo, this area is used for some parking on site. It's primarily for Board of Ed vehicles and other town vehicles, either at night or at different periods during the day. Uh, as a result of the project, we are losing about four spaces in this area, which um, we're intending to formalize a little more. We have an existing gravel uh, parking area right now that's being used just to the north of the salt shed. Um, it's informal. People park all over the place now. so. Just to offset that loss in four spaces that we have in this area, um, we're proposing to clean that up a little bit and organize that a little bit more so we really can continue to store the vehicles on site uh, as needed as they currently do. And then at the bottom of the plan is that proposed sediment basin I'll talk a little bit more about later. So here's the site plan for the project, still an overhead view, north is to the top of the sheet. As I stated, uh, we will be installing this with hurricane straps and a concrete pad. Uh, there will be bollards installed around the tank to provide uh, for impact protection, uh, which is a, a typical requirement. We are proposing an access stairway that would be located on the east side of the tank and central to the tank. So when deliveries come in, they can go up the stairway and fill either tank, the diesel or the gasoline from one location. These tanks are designed where they're concrete and they're seamless. Um, so there is no uh, necessary, uh, no reason to have any containment systems around the tank. They're self-contained in and of themselves, which is typical. And then what you see in the dash lines here, leaving the tank and running over to the canopy and the fuel dispensers are the uh, proposed underground fuel lines. Just like the existing lines we have now, they will be double walled. Um, what happens with these tanks is the, uh, the the suction comes out from the top of the tank, pipes run down the side, then they go underground. And where they go underground is where we have these two uh, boxes located along the tank. Uh, these are called transition sumps. So from that point, it's a positive grade. They're laid at a positive grade up to the dispensers. So if there is a leak, the leak would run down the outer pipe wall and get collected in these transition sumps. Right now, the existing tanks are built the same way. There is a leak detection system in those sumps that we have now we would transfer that leak detection system to these sumps. So if there ever was a leak, it would be detected and uh, staff would be notified. Once the new tank is in, the proposal is to tank, take these two existing 6,000 gallon tanks out of the ground. Um, they both have concrete uh, caps over the top of them. It's an existing parking area, so they would be removed. Um, whatever soil testing, environmental testing that's required will be done at the time. Um, they have been tested uh, throughout their lives with the cathodic testing. Um, there has been some soil testing done, and we don't have any reason to believe there's any contamination. 
Um, of course, with this type of thing, you never know, but we, as far as the data that we have, we're not expecting to have any contamination that would be, uh, would be of concern. Mm -hmm. So the tanks would come out, we'd replace that area with bituminous pavement. It'd be, continue to be used as uh, parking spaces for the facility. Um, in addition, we would flush and abandon the existing pipes in place. They're not shown on this plan because right now we're not exactly sure where they are. Um, we are going to have to do some a little bit of uh, work on when we get out on the site and figure out where they are so we can properly abandon them. I suspect that as we install some of these fuel lines to feed the dispensers, we, pro we will cross them and at that point at least have one location. Then we know the opposite location will be at the tanks where they can be properly abandoned. Um, we are proposing, instead of just having one uh, gasoline tank and one diesel uh, dispenser, rather, underneath the canopy, we're looking at putting two for each. Uh, there are times when the facility is backed up, particularly during a snowstorm or times when heavy use where there are a number of vehicles waiting to get to the dispensers. So we are looking at replacing, uh, doubling the number of dispensers we have and also upgrading the uh, fuel management system that's in place now. So. Whoever's coming to use the site has a particular, uh, whether it's a badge or a, a number they enter in, so town can track which vehicles are getting what gas and when. As part of the project, too, uh, since we're doing work out here, when you turn off the main driveway into the rear of the site, there's an existing telephone pole that sits out here, kind of in the middle of the parking lot with some uh, concrete barriers, and there's usually a couple of Board of Ed buses that are parked here. We're looking to, to move those out of the way. We want to move the light, which has... Um, a floodlight on it. Um, it has some, the pole has a floodlight, has some security cameras, overhead wires attached to it that feeds the attendance shed for the recycling area. We want to just move that out of the parking lot and put it over here in the grass out of the way. Um, that will help improve traffic flow in and out of the rear end, back end of the site here. Because um, right now, vehicles are kind of directed right into where the canopy and the fuel tanks are, and it's a little hard to maneuver through here. So as part of the project, we're going to make those upgrades as well. What you see uh, just just to the north and south of the tank here in orange are some dashed lines. That kind of shows where the existing informal parking is. Um, as, as stated, I think we're losing about four spaces as a result of this, which we can easily accommodate on site. Um, the rest of the area that is used for parking can continue to be used for parking um, as there is adequate space out there and it would not uh, impact any fuel deliveries that might come. Just to give you an example photo, this is a sample tank of what we're looking at. As I said, it's completely concrete. There's no seams. This is a much smaller tank than what we're putting in. This is about a 6,000-gallon tank. Ours would be double as a 12,000-gallon tank. Um, you can see the access stairway up to the side for filling bollards around it. Um, we had looked at, and I'll show you, the, you see the fuel dispenser here in the picture adjacent to the tank. This is the existing canopy um, looking towards the southwest. And uh, we had looked at trying to put, put this underneath the canopy. Um, that way we could have the dispensers right off the tank, get away from the fuel lines and everything else underground. Um, however, we had issues with just having enough room to operate. With the number of vehicles coming in with trailers and plows on them, particularly at night during a snowstorm, it was just it was very tight clearances. Um, and talking with physical services staff, we determined it was better to relocate the tank up against the fence line and run the fuel lines, similar to the system we have now. Um, just for ease of operation. Um, we're planning, you know, this is a 30-year design at least on these tanks, so we want to make sure we do it, which is not going to inhibit the operation of the site. In this photo, the area to the far right here where you see the truck and this, this vehicle over here, that's, that's where the f existing uh, the f future tank is going to go. As you can see, these dispensers are, are fairly dated, so we're going to get new dispensers here. This old dispenser on the back side uh, is no longer operational. We're going to replace that and then we're going to put a new dispenser over here where you see the um, existing uh, recycling container. And these stands here in the middle are our existing uh, fuel management system which will be replaced as part of the project. This is just another view looking at the area where the uh, new tank would be located. It's pretty much adjacent to the shed you see that's on the other side of the fence. Um, we are trying to leave some room. They do have a sliding gate that opens up to allow access to the rear of the facility. They need access to that to clear snow and ice uh, during winter season. So we've slid the tank down far enough that it won't impact the operation of the gate. It allows them to perform maintenance and has limited impact on that uh, informal parking area that we have. This is just a view at the back of the building looking at the existing fuel tanks. Uh, as you can see, there's two concrete pads here with access ports. 
this is the area where the tanks will be pulled out of and then just repaved uh, for par and restriped for parking use. This is a, a plan looking at the southeast corner of the site that I showed you in that orig original slide um, where we're looking to offset the flood storage impacts that we have as a result of the project. Um, so the reason for th the basin is it's only about a foot deep. Uh, it offsets the amount of flood storage we're losing. And also this area of the site generally drains to the southeast and kind of out through this little gap that we have right here in the corner uh, for the con where the concrete barriers are and then eventually flows out into a wetland that's on the DOT property immediately to the east of the site. So while we were doing this, we figured, well, let's put in some kind of sediment control, at least uh, have some better control on runoff that comes off this gravel surface, allow it to at least collect, fill up, and then overflow into the wetland. So that can be maintained and cleaned out periodically uh, by town staff as needed. Um, you may notice the wetland limits shown here coming up through the corner of the site. Uh, we had looked at that closer. That really is disturbed area right now. That's from our town inland wetlands map. Um, that was put on the plan for our inland wetlands permit approval. Um, it has gone through that commission. They have issued the permits. Um, in, in reality, I don't think that we don't feel there's any real wetland impact here. The wetland is more where the slope drops off here as you get onto the state property. So there should be no real wetland impact as part of the project. Um, of course, we put sill fence in below disturbed areas. And regarding the floodplain, we had discussed with them, you know, this is a very active site. There's always material coming in and out, vehicles coming in and out, storage. Um, so within the floodplain, there's a lot of changing in volume. The purpose of putting in the said basin is we're, we're taking up a permanent amount of volume with this permanent installation of the tank, or semi-permanent, it always could be moved, but the intent was to at least do something as best we could to provide some offset to the, to the flood storage that we're losing. And as I said, being that the whole, flight, whole uh, site is underneath the floodplain, there really was nowhere to do at the floodplain elevation, so we had to do it below the floodplain elevation and at least provide it that way. As I st stated earlier, this is a very uh, critical project to the town, um, given the fact we need to meet the DEP requirements and the insurance uh, limitations that we have right now on that tank. So we're, the town's looking to expedite this as quickly as we can. Um, fuel supply is essential to the operation of the town. Like I said, there's a lot of departments that rely on this facility. Um, with that in mind, our intention at this point, you know, pending approval of the commission, uh, I had already gotten in Wellness approval. Uh, we have gone to the Historic District Commission and gotten their approval as well. Um, but pending approval of this commission, we'd move forward with uh, preparing the bid plans and specifications. At this time, we're thinking about using um, a contractor off the of state bid. They have contractors that do this type of work um, to help expedite and, and uh, move the project along a little quicker. We'll think about working with one of them, get pricing from them, and, and uh, see how much it'll cost. Um, we do have about half a million dollars allocated this project, so we're expecting it'll be less than that. Also, as I said, just because it's so critical, we are planning to keep the existing tanks in operation as long as we can during the project. So the intent is to install the new tanks because they're in a different location, run the fuel lines, do as much of the work as we can, keeping the old tanks operational. And then at some point, you know, obviously there's going to be some period of disturbance where we're going to have to switch them over um, from the old tanks to the new tanks. As far as project schedule, we expect the installation of the new tanks and the pertinences that go with that. Um, would take about four weeks to complete. Uh, removal of the existing tanks is either going to piggyback immediately on that project or be at the end of that project, or depending on funding and timing and the contractor's abilities, we may do that as a separate project uh, over the summer. So our intent is really to get started on it as soon as possible this spring, um, four weeks for the initial install of the new equipment, and then probably a couple weeks at the most to take out the old tanks, do the testing we need to, and restore the site back to original conditions. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. All right. Thanks, Derek. For the record, there is a, uh, a letter from uh, the fire marshal with a couple comments. Uh, Justin LaFontaine had a bunch of comments. Have those been incorporated at this point? I believe most of them uh, have been. Uh, there's maybe uh, one or two uh, minor things that I think we can handle as uh, conditions of approval. All right. <clears throat> and as uh, Derek indicated, the Inland Wetland has given the permit already George yeah um, glad to see this proceeding uh, number one I think it's been under consideration quite a while but I have several my first question is a planning type question uh, did you consider other locations for this uh, in town or splitting the function such as 
you know, behind the uh, PlayStation, for example, for part of it, because this uh, site, my, my feeling for it is, and I'm less than familiar with detail, I don't go down in there, but it looks congested and tight, especially during, let's say, snowstorms and things of that nature. Um, so I was wondering if the function had, that had been considered at all, or were you, when you've come in this year, since you've been around a year now, um, you were just told we need it, and we've been needing it for quite a while, we've talked about it for a while, uh, but did you, did you think about that or that, give that consideration? Uh, have you met the parking requirements under our zoning? And maybe Peter can answer that one better, I don't know. Um, how about past flooding? What is the condition down in there in the past floods? I saw nothing about it. Um, the sediment basin and all the environmental was passed by the inland wetlands? Yes. That, it was. Okay, we're going to answer that one. And, uh, okay, any inland wetland issue? That's, okay. That's my few questions right there. Let's see if I can get those in order. Okay. Um, with regard to the location of the fueling facility, uh, I'm not sure what the early discussions were internally, being that I'm relatively new still to the town. Uh, however, my understanding is, uh, you know, this site has functioned um, well enough. I, I, think, I think the town would consider it important to have this fueling station at the physical services garage as they are heavy users, not just truck equipment, but other equipment that they use throughout town. Um, I know they, there was an investment in the existing canopy that was installed down there for, for that reason. I would say my understanding, at least from what I heard, being it is a little bit tight, it still has functioned well. Uh, as I stated, we're looking at making some improvements to kind of open up that back area a little bit more as far as moving the utility pole and getting those barriers and some of those buses out of the way so it does, I think it will function better. I think the fact that we're going to have, instead of just two dispensers, four dispensers will prevent those backups and also some of those uh, changes will help with the maneuverability through the site. So I can't sit and talk specifically to if, you know, police station or other locations were discussed, but um, I, I think from my understanding, I think it would be important for physical services to have that as close to their facility as possible, and being that it's there now, that would be what they're looking for. Uh, as far as uh, parking impacts, that I don't know as the overall site. We're really not changing the overall parking. I don't know how it was calculated for the site. Uh, as I say, there are a few spaces that are, I, would, I consider them informal spaces because they're not really for staff parking. They're more for vehicles as needed, um, where we have a lot of other areas on site that we can, we can uh, move them to to still accommodate what's needed. Um, no, I'm not saying. On that situation, what I meant by it was uh, I think the site has grown like topsy over time, you know, and uh, what I mean, it really meant was, it does it meet our requirements? See that you look into that. Maybe you'd answer it better than he. Well, George, we don't have a specific parking uh, ratio required for a facility such as this. It's a uh, unique and unusual uh, use in in the town. So um, there are uh, approximately 40 spaces for. Uh, visitors and uh, employees v uh, officially designated in the the area uh, labeled as staff parking lot. Uh, yeah, and as Derek mentioned, there's also uh, a designated area primarily for the Board of Education um, employees uh, in proximity to the proposed uh, above ground uh, tank location. Uh, I did comment that there are they are losing a few spaces, but the, the response was they are going to designate uh, an equivalent number of lost spaces uh, elsewhere on the site. So I think, um, you know, at the present time and with the compensation they're proposing, the parking, I mean, it, it's occasionally. And, and you haven't had any problems or complaints over the years, and uh, you're not par having to park across the street. No, the house, there's right? no overflow uh, off site. No overflow issues, People right? find there's, there's plenty of pavement down there, so they can they find a, a spot if the town employees. <laughs> Uh, end up going down there and the parking lot's full they can park you know behind the garage bays temporarily and do their business and get out of there so i, th I think uh, uh there's there's plenty of other alternative areas that work uh fine um on site okay and then that inland wetlands had no issues with this they said they gave a ruling said fine on everything they did but no 
Well, they have, the, they have their permit, so. With respect to your question regarding the, fl the flooding uh, history out there, yeah, um, it is floodplain. As far as I understand, it's if it's occurred, it's very infrequent. Uh, I think the intention would be, and what I expect would happen is, if we're getting that type of storm event where we're expecting that kind of flooding, they move vehicles and important equipment out of the site for that for that reason. And that's the reason why we're taking those extra measures of the extra thick concrete pad, the hurricane straps to tie the tank down in the event. And as I said, the whole site's floodplain, but in the area that we're talking, it's a couple feet at the most. So really, from a engineering perspective, we probably don't need the extra thick pad in the hurricane strap. It's just an added measure just to, to be sure, because, I mean, obviously, when we're talking flood limits and flood depths, you know, it's all, it's all as close as we can estimate. So we're, we're trying I, I to take think, the extra precaution by doing that. I think that's good, but I was just more concerned with, uh, let's say, it floods, and you have to go rescue people, and you need your emergency equipment. Police guys have to come in there to gas up. That's well, the reason I, for my first question on my list. So. Yeah, and I think in, in that kind of situation, there would be measures mm. taken to either have uh, temporary fueling areas or we would contract uh, with a, with a <laughs> local gas Osteen, stations to accommodate sources, what we need yeah. in an emergency situation okay. like that, yeah. Thanks. James? First. Yeah, I echo George. This project's a long time coming. <clears throat> we need to get it done. My only concern uh, and you were somewhat vague, is the tank removal. I have a personal concern because I've had experience uh, because of not only the funding from this project, but other things I've been personally involved with, that when funding gets tough, uh, the tanks don't get removed. We have a habit in this town of not finishing projects. Um, this has been going on for years. The windows of Webb School have never been replaced, and they're supposed to have been replaced years ago. Uh, I personally in favor of this, but I think we need to put some kind of condition on an end result for the removal of the tanks. Uh, that's where my concern is. <laughs> it puts some pressure on uh, those who are authorizing funds, but I think it needs to be done for the safety of the town. Yeah, and, and that would piggyback on DEP's requirement because they're, they're the ones really driving this project prior to the failed cathodic system. The fact that those tanks need to be taken out of operation and removed by next year is also driving this. So that is an intention of the project because DEP, DEP is going to require that from us. I don't know if DEP require was, has a time limit for removal. I know you have to put a new tank in, but once the tank is supposedly empty, it could stay there and there could be, there's been a failure of the tank, there could be a leakage in there. We have no idea until those tanks are done and the testing is done. I'd like to see some kind of time limitation, whether it be one year after the completion of the project or whatever else it is, you know, something. I, yeah, I, and I, I, yeah, my understanding by DEP requirements, they want them removed yeah, by the time so they're 30 too. years old, which is next year, which yeah. is why we're doing this project. So I think they're going to require us to take them out. At least that's my understanding that they not just discontinued, but actually they want them taken out of the ground particularly at this site because of the fact that we're in a floodplain yeah. uh, for buoyancy reasons. But yeah, I, I'd have no, you know, I have no issue with that being a stipulation. James. Yeah, I'm 100% comfortable with this project having owned and operated both styles in, in ground and above ground tank. The con vault that you showed is absolutely the best way to go in this, this particular scenario, absolutely. In particular, that you're in a floodplain. Uh, I respect Dan's point, but it does, I'm not panicked because you are driven by DEP regs of how to handle those tanks, proper abandonment, the fire marshal says right in it, the fire marshal is going to be right on top of this. And you do have a TLS system right now? Yeah. So even if he did abandon the tanks and didn't remove them, he has a monitoring system, so he's going to know if something happened inside the tank. Let's say he vacuumed dry and it filled up with water, he's going to know it because it has a monitoring system on it. You're not going to abandon the monitoring system, right? Yeah, we. it has a it monitoring system. Now, our intention is to... Use, we use that system for the new new tanks. Right. Um, but yeah, th that is in place and has been in place for quite some yeah. time. And is your gas still functioning or is it not even functioning right now? The tank, the gasoline tank, that it's functioning. It's operational. It's just a matter of the cathodic system that's protecting yeah, it is no longer cool. working. So we can expect that it is deteriorating, uh, you know, more rapidly than it had been. But I, yeah, this is the, this is the best way to go with the, particularly in this environment all the way around, okay. safety, environment, the whole bit, everything just checks all boxes. Thank you. So I'll remind the uh, commissioners that this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to offer comment on this? All right. Thank you.
Any other questions for the applicant? You mentioned abandoning the fuel lines. Has that been looked into in the process? I mean, just, I know from past experience, the abandoning of anything under, underneath the ground in the state is really tabooed. And what I'm saying is, are you when you hire that um, contractor to put the tanks in, are you going to ask them to do an exiting plan of the other tanks, just so that you know your traffic flow through the site when you tear? Because when you tear those tanks up, you're going to have to have you know, you have to fill them, you're going to have to fill those spots in, and you have to get the tanks out of <coughs> with a crane, so. Yeah, I don't think we haven't gotten got into that level of detail of, I'm just, of I'm how that's going to be managed. I'm just you're fueling for a couple of days. Yeah, and I'm sure there will be a period of time when we have to do that switch over, so it, it might be that we try and do that work on the weekend or, uh, or, or a holiday. I, I'm not sure how we're going to handle that yet, but, I mean, physical services is well aware and promoting this project, so whether that be we need temporary fueling or have to use a gas station for a few days, uh, that may be what we opt to do. Um, but we'll try and minimize that overlap to the extent we can. A couple, couple quick questions. Um, by the way, good detail plan, great presentation. Just to kind of piggyback on the, the flooding, if there is a flood, uh, are there automatic um, you know, shutoff valves or what happens if there is a flood is my, is my question whether you know, it's designed for that. And second is location, you know, very close to recycling center. We've had two fires in town recently. Um, I, know, I think the fires marshal looked at it, but just with that, you know, potential is this fire rate seems really close to that recycling shed. Uh, with regards to that, I know we've walked the site with the fire marshal to talk about location. He was comfortable with respect to that. And, and to be honest with you, as far as what's stored in that shed, um, I, I'm not familiar with, uh, I'm not familiar what, what is stored. That might be waste oil, possibly. So that's something we can talk with him about. Um, my understanding today, he didn't have a concern with that. Any other question with regard to automatic shut off valves? Oh, shut off valves. We haven't gotten to that level of detail of the design. I don't believe so. Uh, the way the tanks are designed, the pipes come out the top and come down, and then they go underground. So with only a couple feet of water out there, I don't think there would be um, intention to do that. I assume that the uh, those plastic tanks we have to where the pipes come down and we have that leak detection system we have to accommodate the fact to make those watertight so we don't get water into the lines and have that type of problem so those are some of the details we haven't really worked out yet but yeah that's a good point something to consider any other questions of the applicant george yeah um not really questions i think you've got them in mind and i i'm just saying justin uh La Fontaine uh, went had 15 issues, I think. 15. Yeah. Uh, have you gone through that and uh, resolved most of them? I asked. Um, we've asked several of them and to you already, but the pl the plans that were distributed to you last Friday did address all of Justin's comments. We met with him to go through them all. So my understanding is those plans did address his comments. Okay, uh, Fire Marshal had some more general comments about what he's expecting through the construction process that we'll address on the, on the construction plans that are put together. Okay, thank you. I suspect we could just make sure that they get addressed to a you yeah. know, comment, that right? That would be my concern, <clears throat> right, yeah. Okay. In other words, you say you have addressed them all. Yes, I believe you have the plans that were revised. But you didn't put, a, you didn't put it in writing or anything mm. at this point. I didn't. I did not. Um, I resubmitted. I don't know if there was actually a memo written to say they had been addressed. Oh, I had met with Justin last week just to go through them, but yeah, if there's anything else that needs to be addressed, we can certainly do that. Peter, are you ready to uh, give us any help in that? Yeah, when you get to the to that point? yeah, when you get to the point of making a motion, I've got a few suggested conditions, so I can certainly do that. Thank you. Okay. If there's no more comments from anybody, make a motion. We close the hearing. Thank Sorry. you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? All right. Would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, make a motion. We approve application 193317 Z. Uh, with the first condition being that any of the <coughs> comments notated in Justin's notations uh, dated January 26th that haven't been addressed yet be reflected on the pl final plans. Did, did you have other? The only, uh, the only other ones uh, were the 
uh, uh, comments number three and four from the fire marshal, number three being he'd like some additional signage. He didn't specify what that uh, signage would be. And then uh, secondly, he just wants to make sure that as the underground storage tanks are removed that he witnessed it. I think that'll be part of his permit anyway, but I would suggest the record reflect that. In terms of the uh, zoning officer's comments, I, I believe all of them uh, have been addressed. A note was added regarding the additional parking. The only two that uh, maybe a, a specific condition uh, should be attached is that um, any in any cases where additional or modified uh, lighting, site lighting is provided, we normally attach a condition that the uh, lights be full cut off uh, floodlights uh, are not are not typically acceptable anymore for uh, full cutoff purposes. So if the floodlight is being relocated to a new pole, it should be a new a new fixture that's um, full cut off, and any lighting around the the tank itself should also be full cut off. So it at least attempts to address. Uh, I I think the lighting from the canopy, uh, which isn't full cut off, has a pretty significant spread over the entire parking lot. So I'm not sure if the additional lighting is even necessary, but nevertheless, if they do choose to put more lighting in, it should be a full cutoff. I think all of his other comments have been addressed. There were no comments on the wetlands uh, conditions, so those don't need to be attached. So I think the fire marshals and then those two comments from the zoning officer should be sufficient. Um, all right, so I'll amend the motion to add items three and four from the fire marshal's memo about proper signage and his office witnessing the removal of the underground tanks and that uh, any new lighting installed at the site be full cut off. Second. Thank you. So do we want to talk for at least a moment about uh, the idea that there should be some extra words about following through and removing the tanks beyond what the fire marshal has done? I, I tend to believe that DEEP will require us to do it anyways I don't but it, I don't know that it hurts either so you know. I guess my only concern is that you know deeps gonna require it that we have a condition that's inconsistent with that okay. either that in we term can rely or extent. on staff to tell him that and he'll do it right okay well I mean staff is gonna do it if they have the funding to do it right so does does our adding the thought into the motion um, apply any additional necessary motivation behind the town to fully fund it I don't actually know well I guess if you know if we want to have something for conversational purposes you know maybe a condition like you know unless other unless otherwise required by deep um, you know the approval requires the removal of the existing underground tanks and within one year of the approval or one year of the project being started. And, and yeah, I, so. I feel better with that. Just add some teeth to it. Yeah, I mean, and if DEEP has different requirements, yeah, those, can, those prevail. That's fine. Right. Tony, would you? Uh, I'll second. Thank you. All right, so we got a motion. It's got, uh, I think, four, four, one, two, no, five, five different steps. All right. Yep. Everybody understand them? All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Sorry. Go do it. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item, 3.2, a public hearing, application number 1934-17-Z for Wengzhou. I apologize for the pronunciation. <laughs> I'm sure you can help me in a moment. Uh, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2 and 5.8 of the zoning regs for a change of use for a restaurant and for the sale of alcoholic beverages at 1321 Silestine. Good evening, uh, Commissioner. Uh, my name is Bill Chen. Actually, I'm not a application. My partner, uh, Kevin, you can call him Kevin Xu. He's the one who's on the application. And, uh, we are here to uh, propose an uh, authentic Japanese ramen restaurant in the town of uh, Wethersfield. And uh, the space used to be a, a hardware store on the side of Sting Highway, and now it's a grocery store. 
and which are the space then would be too much for them. So we take a one a layer of net storage space used as a ramen restaurant. And um, by, again, my name is Bill Chen. I'm a president of a Ginja restaurant group in Harper area. We have a six locations in Connecticut and Massachusetts. And we have been serve our patrons with uh, hibachi. We are famous as hibachi sushi and some Asian fusion dishes. And also we have a one in Wethersfield too, which is a ginza in uh, Gulf Brook Plaza. And we've been there for seven years. And we have been in Russian business about 20 years already. And so we'd like to bring something a little different to our, to the town, to this lovely town. And uh, I think the, the name of the restaurant would be called Karibon Ramen, which Karibon means a friends uh, in a Chinese native language. So what we offer is going to be a, a very authentic Japanese dish, even named after a Chinese. <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, uh, what else? <laughs> I wish I have a better the screen there than the gentleman has in front of you, so I can show you some of our pictures. How the restaurant is going to be look like, and uh, how. How how we're going to be change it to a uh, uh, totally different than what we have over what you have over there now. And, uh, so, so we we have a set of plans. You have a set of plans. They have your plans. Yeah, we so. have. Oh, okay, that's great. Um, I'm no. just where, wondering. Where we didn't get the plan. Yeah, we, didn't. No, we didn't get those. Plans. So, uh, so let us. Uh, you didn't get plans? No. 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 So I have some uh, more plans over here if you if you need it. Yeah, we can shoot. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And maybe you can help us understand. You know, sure. because so my you, guess is you it's recently not a big deal. approved uh, o O M Foods. Mm -hmm in a portion of the former hardware store. So if you're facing it from the parking lot, uh, they are going to take uh, sublet some of their space to the right of that, uh, create a new storefront, new door entrance. Um, yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's so in that space, if you, um, you know, are familiar, well, this plan kind of, here's Salstein Highway, here's their parking lot. So they're going to take this cross-hatched, uh, gray area. Here's where the, the majority of the OM Foods is. So uh, they're going to sublet that space in there from uh, from OM Foods. Um, they decided they couldn't utilize uh, all of that space. So it's up sort of the front portion where the hard, where part of the hardware store once was. If you've ever kind of on the right end of that. Yeah, space. I'm trying to remember what was in the in the hardware store. But as you go into the hardware store, all of that back storage back space room. to the right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was a hardware store storage. I believe it yep. was a hardware storage room anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, s rough square footage. So you're gonna uh, have your, you're gonna have your 1700 own. Seventeen hundred square footage. Seventeen hundred. Yeah. And it's gonna it's own entrance door, etc. Yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, the fire marshal has gone through it. Mm -hmm. Um. Appear to meet the code, so you have uh, Tony Dignati's approval. Is there anything from planning staff that you know? There is there is a description of what's going on in the file. I, I, at least my copy had it right. So you've got a number of chefs, three chefs, three servers, a hostess, and a manager, a crew of eight. 
1,700 square feet. Uh, the hours of operation, which is essentially every day, right? Yep. Anything else that staff would uh, offer? If you're, if you're familiar with the site, uh, there is a rather large parking lot to the rear. Uh, they did provide uh, uh, to us, once again, I don't know if you got it in your packet, a supplemental parking calculation because this is a restaurant and we'll have seating. Uh, there is adequate parking uh, on the site. Uh, in the back primarily to, to satisfy um, the parking requirements as specified in your zoning regulations. I, I also may understand that uh, they have the uh, Ginza restaurant already in the Golf Brook shops. You may have uh, an agreement with the Golf Brook shops parking, uh, parking lot owner who owns both properties for overflow parking to use that. Yes. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Yep. I, so I don't think there is a, a parking uh, parking issue. Uh, I am familiar with that site uh, as I frequent some of the businesses there, and I have not uh, observed a, a particular uh, problem there. The condition of some of the asphalt uh, is, uh, and it's striping, and some of that those issues probably needs to be addressed as part of this new tenancy. Additionally, um, as a condition of approval, um, the refuse disposal areas which need which would service this particular restaurant should be properly uh, brought up to code screened and put on you know concrete pad uh, to comply with our, our refuse uh, screening uh, requirements uh, yeah. they can handle their signage as a separate uh, a separate matter but um, there is adequate parking based on your regulations um, and uh, with a couple of those minor conditions um, they, they should uh, be able to go forward. Uh, you should also be aware that in addition uh, to the change of use for the restaurant, they are also asking for uh, a beer and wine yeah. license uh, as part of this application as well. So you are uh, reviewing that at the same time. Um, would it be your uh, thoughts that the refuse area could be something that you know can be approved by staff? Yes, I think our, our staff memo suggests that it, you know, once they provide us with the details, we'll approve it by staff. If they want to consolidate all of the refuse as part of the complex in the back there, that's probably a preferred uh, scenario. But once again, that's really up to them as to how they want to do that. George? Yeah. Um, Mr. Uh, let's see, what's she. Uh, Kevin. Uh, uh promised us a, a pavement, a new pavement at some time in the future. Uh, the last two couple of times he's been in front of us. And he said, I want to wait until I get certain things in place. Well, this he added into the south, a whole building. Uh, and I think maybe he paved that southern the lot in front of this, or the back lot you're talking about. I don't know. Well, he made the cut through, right? So, uh, yeah, he, ma he made the connection between the two properties. The place is getting area? bad, no, going so. in and out of uh, the northern end of it. and. Uh, really rough and uh, he really ought to get on with that and I'd, I'd like to put it as a condition myself that's my feeling and I mean the whole darn thing because he's promised it and hasn't done it and how, I mean how long is he gonna wait till he gets two more vacancies and fill them anyway you know he's he's a good he's a good uh, taxpayer in this town and I'm pleased he's around and he's done doing good work but he missed on that one the other thing the other question I had we're not supposed to approve a concentration of uh, liquor dispensing locations. Uh, how many are there in that area? Probably none, except uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, maybe. So, uh, Ginza. Oh, Ginza. Got Ginza. Ginza. Chips, right? You've got the. Uh, you've, we, you've got the Ginza, we package have a store. Liquor Ginza. Liquor license for liquor license to Ginza, which is uh, about the same plaza. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, more or less restaurants, not. Package stores because no, package it is. stores are regulated. You oh. can't have any more than we already have in this town. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking about, I guess, restaurants. So what do you think? Kinza, Sophia's, Buffalo Wild Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. KFC. Red Lobster across the street. Aren't we not on the state statute? Aren't we not supposed to concentrate? I mean, that's the only reason uh, yeah, I asked the question. Yeah, I was going to. Right yeah, here. I was going to quote you right out of the. I'm trying to find the section here. Uh, so it's like an undue concentration where it becomes General. a dominant characteristic is, of the neighborhood. What is the undue concentration? I mean, it's where it becomes the dominant characteristic of the neighborhood. 
But that's really, isn't that really a liquor control regulation rather than? Yeah. A, no. Uh, no. I no. did, no. No. we did talk to a liquor c control before I came over here. They have no problem to issue us a yeah. liquor so license as long as you approve so it. We, so we can read it, right? Yeah, so out of uh, section 5.8, subsection B, under the special permit requirements, there are two uh, general criteria that you have to look at. The uh, subsection A is the proximity of the establishment to schools churches, residential neighborhoods, and charitable institutions supported by public or private funds, funds such that in the judgment of the commission, the trade associated with the establishment does not disrupt the quiet pursuit of education and religion. So that's the first criteria. Second is the proximity of the establishment to another alcoholic beverage establishment such that in the judgment of the commission, there not be created a cluster or undue concentration of establishments where the sale or consumption of alcoholic beverages may be perceived as a dominant characteristic of the neighborhood or area. So this is a restaurant with uh, beer and wine, not a bar. bar. So, so I think that's really what they were. Uh, Are they talking about uh, a package store or a dispensing operation bar? I think more or less they're, they're talking about nightclubs and, and yeah. bars. Yeah, all. I mean, I, I think we were talking about the Union Station area in Hartford or Bourbon Street or something like that. No. I never did know what that meant in the past. So well, you voted for it. <laughs> We, we are a restaurant, we serve alcohol, but we don't have a bar, like a sit-down bar. We have a serving bar. You know, mostly it's full, people going there for f food and, yeah. uh, and uh, alcohol, if they want. Well, thank you. Uh, other, yeah. other questions for the applicant before I ask for, is there anybody in the public who'd like to offer some comment? Yeah, the wine covers the sake, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. good. Any additional facade improvements? So, so could you yeah, offer your off your name so that we can uh, put it on? <laughs> <laughs> We're putting that on the record. I'm putting it on the record. I'm up next. Mike Kirk, go ahead. 553 Maple. I'm on the record. Other, right other questions, Tony? Any additional facade improvements? And the addition of a facade. You're putting in uh, new yeah. doors, new yeah. windows mm -hmm. that don't exist there now? Yeah, we are putting a new new door and new Store window. Yeah. And, and it'll have a new sign, which will come back before staff eventually as well, right? Okay. But the entire, just for the record, the entire facade of that property was just completely uh, overhauled um, through our facade improvement program. So. Um, is that considered done though right now? Yeah. That is okay. Yep. Peter, do you want a pavement condition put into our approval or not? Uh, uh, you're, George, you were correct. There were uh, previous um, comments on that and promises made. Twice. And they've been, um, I, he was, I think he was primarily waiting for this tenant, last tenancy and for the facade to be completed. He just recently completed the facade and I think this is the last available space yeah, uh, in the is. building, mm -hmm. so it's now now is the time as as part of this project to have that work done. The only but caveat, not just, not just that end of it, but the whole thing to the north, all the way up to Buffalo Wild Wings, right? No, it's, I mean I wouldn't. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't recall that being uh, as uh, this. They consider both of these separate separate properties, um, and you really only have this application in front of you. Uh, I don't. I'm trying to recall the. I don't think the conditions in the golf brook shops are maybe as you think they are. They're not. Well, we didn't require it, but he promised it. He promised it for this property, not for the golf brook. Hmm. I, I'm very sure, yeah. Uh, there was definitely a previous condition on the grocery store for this property. Yep. Oh. And, and the con pavement condition is, is, very, yeah, is substandard yeah, there, so it really needs to be taken care of in this, in this well, particular next, case. Tell him right. next time he comes in and talks to you about the upper area, that's going to be a condition. Okay, Rich? I guess just to go back to something you said, you also own Ginza? Yeah, Ginza okay. in Wellersville, Bloomfield, and uh, one Express in Harper downtown. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just thought, wow, this is awful close to Ginza. Yeah, it's a little, it's different, it's different, it is Japanese 
dish, but it's different than what we offer. Yeah. yeah which is now is very popular in New York City. And that's something we just brought it to this area. It's okay. It'll be a fresh wine uh, around, in, uh, around in town. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Other questions to the applicant? Hearing none and assuming there are no additional questions from the public. Make a motion we close the hearing. Thank you both. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Passes unanimously as our governor would say. Um, Make a motion we approve you. application 1934-17-Z uh, with the stipulation that uh, any additional refuse disposal areas be uh, screened and details provided uh, acceptable to town staff. Do your motion or a second to that? I second. Thank you. Um, yeah, there were no other comments, right? No other steps? Well, George had a, a oh, the, uh, on the pavement. The pavement. Condition right. and striping and that kind of thing. I'll take a short, take a whack at it. Um, what does so, he? The applicant shall, and the landlord shall, you know, yeah, no. upgrade or repair pavement and striping. How do you want it? Yeah, repair it. You don't need full pavement. You want it? I I don't I don't know if we're in a position to specify the actual level of, um, you know, improvement or repair. Whether you know he can patch and a combination of you know. Cut and I, you know, I, I, as I say, the, the pavement condition is, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe in consult with the town engineer. Um, uh, like, so, I don't know. So I, I mean, I, we always struggle with this. Right? Yeah. it's not the owner; it's an applicant right. who's just leasing a part of it, and there's only so much, you know. Unless, yeah, I was, unless I was, we're going to say that, I was definitely going to say that, uh, particularly uh, this tenant may want to get into the uh, space before the weather. Uh, permits the paving to be done so I wouldn't necessarily tie it to the occupancy of the space but um, this was a question and an issue that came up the last time someone came in so the, the work has not been done uh, to the you know our satisfaction so but I would caution you not to necessarily <coughs> tie it to this tenant um, or if you six months on it after. or we could handle it maybe as a property maintenance you know and he works it out with the property maintenance officer because we do have a something in the zoning regulations that that you know property owners shall maintain you know the improvements on their property to the level um, so uh, yeah, that I'm, that's another way if you want to separate the two issues and then just for the record you know pass pass on a recommendation that the property maintenance officer you know work with the property owner to get the uh, the pavement uh, you know, it, it may end up working out that when he does the dumpster and the screening that, you know, he does all of that at the same time. But um, I just wouldn't want this applicant to get hung up in that and then never gets resolved. So if you want to maybe make a recommendation, that might be the better way of doing it. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do that because I was, you know, frankly not having, I mean, I drove by it. I didn't right. stare at Look the parking at yep. lot, um, you know, make it the uh, commission's recommendation that the landlord... Uh, follow through on previous indications that he's going to repair or replace uh, the pavement and the striping and the parking and traffic areas on this site. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll work with town staff and the property maintenance division uh, to get that done. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, if it's like, I don't want to spend $200,000 on parking, you know, this guy isn't going to be able to get in. So oh, thank um, you. That's it's not fair to anybody. No, it's not. Okay. So does anybody think we need to technically deal with those two separately, or is it just a motion for, to approve with a re recommendation to staff? I think there was a motion already by Rich on that first Second. condition, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. And we had a second. Who was a second? I had a second. Thank you. Right. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Very good. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Item 3.3, .3, a public oh, hearing. Of course. Thank you. Thank you so. Good luck. Public hearing application number 1935-17-Z. Micah Kerr seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.5.2 for home occupations. 
uh, for a brewery in a residential zone at 553 Maple. Would the applicant join us, please? Hello. Mr. Um, first off, look, sorry, uh, my wife's sick, so she didn't make it tonight. Uh, there is a, a misprint there. It's not a brewery. It is a beer-related business, so there will be no production or manufacture of alcohol on premise as the dialogue stipulates. It's, it's hmm. technically I'm applying to be a beer distributor. And I will be distributing my own private label of beer throughout the state. Well, actually, truly just throughout Hartford County. And uh, it's all through third parties. This is contract brewing. There's no way I could produce beer on my property without completely changing the nature of the property or my lifestyle, uh, which is not something I want to do. So uh, in brief, hi, I'm Micah Kerr, and I make beer. And I hope to make beer that you're going to drink in the near future. In order to do that, the state of Connecticut requires me to get approval from the town that I intend to operate in. As a beer distributorship, I will have a walk-in cooler, and I will be bringing keg beer only, not cans or bottles, but keg beer to restaurants, possibly Ginza, and <laughs> selling them the a five-gallon or 15-gallon keg and it's that simple transaction. For me, I, I make my margin on that. I have a, a third party produce the beer. As an example, I'll say um, Thomas Hooker produces 1,200 gallons of beer for me at a clip, fills it into kegs. They keep it in their warehousing. I pick it up when I need it. But the state also requires that I have my own cooler as well. So all I'm really looking to do is to, uh, install a walk-in cooler into my barn so I am legally allowed to do what I want to do. The issue is there are no laws currently in the state to make it easy or make sense to open a business like this. And there are no um, regulations in the books for the town as well to cover this. So I'm kind of in a, in a position where I, I guess I'm just going to have to do whatever folks want me to do to try to make it happen. But it's generally a, a pretty uh, standard model in the beer industry outside of Connecticut. Uh, in fact, had I started my business in New York State or in Massachusetts, I wouldn't have to jump through these same hoops. It's just part of Connecticut regulation. So um, now I'll give you a little bit more of my dialogue. So there's my background, which brought me here today. Uh, my barn is 800 square feet approximately. I, I like to look at it. It's broken into three different sections because it's a big old barn. It's a balloon framed with... Uh, uh, 12 by 12 or 10 by 10 uh, beams throughout. So it's it's a series, of, I think I put a floor plan on there and um, you see there's a couple, I made it in Excel, which makes me, I'm so not an architect, but I'm pretty good in Excel. Um, you see there's the little black boxes there. Those are actually the beams. And so there's a footing around the entire edge and then there's, there's two beams kind of in the middle. So each of these sections, I look at it as, as three sections of about 11 feet by uh, 24 feet. And each of those would be a garage bay if there weren't a chimney <laughs> right there where one of them is. So what I did, I came in here previously and I, I got um, approval to put an apartment above it because there had been one for farm workers a million years ago that was never made legal. Uh, I still haven't done anything to make it legal because uh, there are some requirements I have. But uh, at some point, there may be an apartment upstairs. But I also got building permits to frame this up as you see it. So the building department here has already approved me to put the garage doors where I'm showing them on this diagram. They're not currently there. And the building department has also approved for me to frame up all the walls so I can put insulation in and um, run electric ah, as needed. The only difference is, is if you look on the little floor plan I have there, I put some dotted lines where there's a walk-in cooler. I threw myself a desk in there and some shelves. And quite simply, all I'm going to do is I'll be storing a small amount of beer there at times when I need to. Um, any major distribution would come from my production brewery that I'd be contracting with, just like any major distribution I would be contracting a third party to do as well. I've already got an agreement with a third party. They will never come to my property. The only people that will be doing this stuff on my property is me. 
So it is a beer distributorship, but the best way I would really describe it is it's a sales office. It's just going to be me. I have no employees. I will be having a portable bar, and I will be bringing it to beer fests and giving people free samples. That's what I'll be doing. And so it means maybe I'll come in and out of my driveway a couple, two, three times a day, but I don't think that's any more than had I come home for lunch from a regular job anyway. So it shouldn't have any um, impact in appearances or in frequency of use. I, I try to really look at that from a neighborly perspective, and I, I don't even know if anyone would notice that I'm doing what I'm doing. So um, I'm really open to questions because this is sort of unique and not in line with anything. I hope uh, in the dialogue that I give you, um, the items one through eight, I think I cover the code's requirement for, uh, the, I believe it's referred as a major occupation as a home business. The only thing that makes this different from me running, um, I don't know, a, a construction company out of, I probably have less visible activity than a construction company, and I would, yeah, that's probably about it. You, you won't see it. So, but it gives you something to tax. So I figure there's, the, the, I mean, that's my, that's all I got. <laughs> so uh, I, I must have missed it. How are you transporting the kegs to and from the Oh, in, in a vehicle, structure? like a normal car, any vehicle. So I currently own a Ford E350 that I drive in and out of the property from time to time. I'm actually going to probably sell that at some point and get something much smaller because it's an enormous van. But I, 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 I call it my yard van, like, you know, as if it's a, if you've been to the house, it's a really old house. I always have stuff I have to do with it. It's got a lot of work still uh, waiting to be done. But, but you are running a business not currently that building. Not currently. You would be. would be. I would be. So currently I have my LLC registered there, as in I have like a, a desk that, you know, computer sits on. But I am required by the state of Connecticut to have a walk-in cooler. I, I've purchased a walk-in cooler. I'm going to have to have it somewhere. Um, and the thought was I, I'd rather put $10,000 into fixing up my barn and put the walk-in cooler there than to lease space for three years at 1000 bucks a month. The several places I tried to get into uh, have too short of a ceiling anyway. Is this your primary business? Is this your job? As of right now, it is, I am unemployed, so yes. However, that doesn't mean I won't pick up a contract. I'm do, I do consultant work at time to time. But it would be my sole employment, hopefully, at some point. But we can only hope. So yeah, three times a day, your truck going in and out to deliver? If, uh, if would even. Would it include yeah. Sundays and seven days a week? I don't know about Sundays. Early in the morning, late oh, at night? If it's me doing it, not early in the morning. <laughs> Bars don't open early. So I'm delivering these to bars and restaurants. If you, if you look at um, your standard delivery times at a bar or restaurant, would usually be on a weekday, usually like a Thursday, and it's this, they need to have the staff there to take delivery. Most bars won't even, or places that serve alcohol, their alcohol serving staff won't even show up till 11 o'clock. So it would be after 11 a.m. And since it's my own personal life, I sure as heck am not heading out at two in the morning to deliver somebody alcohol. I'm fairly certain that's against the law anyway. I'm highly, re I'm required by federal and state law to document everything to a level that I, you know, care not even mention. It's kind of. So this is, this is a business you would be conducting, it could be seven days a week uh, during the daylight hours, uh, whenever you had to move your. Well, like, like any home business, yep. Truck. Yep. It around. So it's a business. Like as I said, like any home business, I am just like uh, any. Like if you are a contractor, you come and uh, do and drive in and out of your driveway to go do an estimate at somebody's house. Absolutely, any day of the week. But I would not say it would ever be early in the morning because that's just the nature of the business. And their bars and restaurants don't do deliveries at night. I could be coming back from an event that I was at. I would say probably as late as nine or 10 o'clock, but rarely ever do they even go, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with like a beer fest or something where you're giving out those free samples, they usually end a little earlier because those events don't like to go late. They're usually more during the daytime. So um, I'd say maybe 10 o'clock, but that, it's so just one vehicle. in other words, you, the fifth item on home occupations, uh, which are listed here, it uh, does not involve the storage of delivery or significant quantity. You, you 
in other words, you don't feel it's significant quantities of goods and materials. I would say that's, I mean, significant is a relative term. It's up to you to decide what you feel is significant is, which is why I'm opening myself to questions. I, I would suppose in the individual consumption level, I suppose it's significant because a keg is a lot of beer for one person. But in the world of brewing is the contract that I'm currently pursuing to have my beer produced. It's 1,240 gallons at a clip, right? So when I take delivery from, as example, Thomas Hooker Brewing, I would be receiving 1,250 odd gallons of beer at that time. That beer won't be going into my cooler. <laughs> that beer could not fit in, a, that's like a tractor trailer full of beer. It would go, it would stay at Thomas Hooker Brewing in their warehouse. So, and that's agreed upon, that's how it would operate. I would, if I have it, it's five gallon kegs, uh, a dozen of them, couple dozen of them. My cooler is 12 feet by nine feet. You can only fit so much in there. I don't have a forklift. I'm not gonna be stacking 150 pound kegs. Uh, it is, it's really just so I can operate without having to drive to Bloomfield and pick up beer to then drive somewhere else for an event. I, as, I, as I referred to, it is like, it's a sales office. It's where I'll operate and I'll do my sales and hopefully have a third party do my primary distribution from major warehouses using beer delivery trucks and then never come near my property. Your bookkeeping office operations and so forth to run this are in your house? Yes. Most of them exist on that cell phone over there. Yeah. <laughs> because that's, you got to be portable today. So, uh, I, you know, the idea of, of significant, I'll, I'll describe what significant would be to me, right? Um, you know, this is all about making sure that you're being um, a good neighbor basically yep. right and um it's not an insignificant walk-in cooler you know i i'll i'll take you at your word and say you're not going to stack them up etc you know so how many how many kegs would fit there but i hear 1200 gallons at a run and you know i don't know how many kegs that is i'm not going to do the math at the top of my head but you probably yeah. know yeah it's 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 so 80 80 half barrels so of the big, you know, right. house kegs, it would be, there's no way there, that's but, a large portion of this room. So, so, you know, when I see a cooler of this size, I wonder how are you delivering it? It goes back to my first question, right? Because yeah. certainly I could envision a, you know, a truck, not a personal van oh, delivering no. these things. So, so sure. make me feel better about it. Because this is a business. It belongs. Absolutely. If, if the storage of this stuff was, if, if this was a major storage site, you know, my reaction would be going, no way, right? Um, I, we need to be able to con feel comfortable that, you know, five years from now, it's still the same thing, that, you know, yep. it's still one keg at a time, two kegs at a time or something, right? Because, you know, once this goes on the land record, you can, you know, we're not going to see you every day, right? And we're not going to really know what's going on. The control is lost. So I'm um, having concerns about, you know, what's the growth opportunity and, and once you make the investment here, sure. you're not moving it when you grow too big, that kind of stuff. It so full, full, here's my plan. And uh, I have it documented in thousands of papers of research I've done because I don't take this stuff too lightly. In order to break into the brewing industry, there's a huge amount of upfront cost. You've seen breweries, they're giant stainless steel tanks. It's quite literally up to a million dollars just to get started. I don't happen to have a million dollars. I don't want to go into that much debt. There are banks that will give it to you. All the folks that are opening these breweries today, a lot of those are gonna close. It's just the reality of the business. It's growing very quickly. I know I provide a good product. I know I'm capable of selling it. I know that there's a lot I, can, I personally can bring to the industry. What I don't want to do is get stuck with a small system that I have to constantly make bigger and then go into further debt. It's like buying a car and rolling the debt over to the next car. It's just poor business sense. So for me, I'm going to create my brand with this distribution model. And I'm going to grow my brand, I'm going to market it, I'm going to make my brewery a hopefully a household name in the area. That will then allow me to build one brewery and my intention is to build it a standalone building I've, I've told Peter my, my goal would be to have that actually in Hartford, in downtown, in a walkable. Bad answer, Wethersfield. <laughs> well, 
I, I'm willing you selling to, to listen. I thought you said you were a great salesman. <laughs> I'm willing to listen. So I was, the next thing I was going to say, however, the town of Wethersfield could always figure out a way to help bring me here. Um, you know, the, the reality is, is because it, it is, it's, you know, a million dollars of stainless steel, it's all taxable goods. And trust me, everyone wants a piece of that, but there's also an enormous amount of regulation. And so that's kind of why I don't want to go through several iterations of trying to build this thing. I want to build a brand to a certain level. I have a distribution agreement with a company that will take it from the production point, which again, I'm contracting, and they will deliver it to every county outside of Hartford County. And then they will also deliver it to Long Island and Massachusetts when it's time to do that. I, I'm originally from Long Island and I have some plans for Long Island for the summer. So I hope to be able to roll this out hmm. <laughs> relatively soon. Um, so the goal is to you know, build a brand. And unfortunately, it's not something where you can just, you know, uh, you know, I'm more familiar with construction than a lot of other things, but you can't, so to speak, put your shingle out or start doing work for one person than the next and then start to build a reputation and to build your construction company. You have to buy, like I said, a ridiculous amount of highly expensive equipment and install it in a very specific building, purpose built or purpose renovated. And I'm going a different path and that's to build a brand. Production will not happen on my house. It is it's not realistic. It requires the ability to sell alcohol to um, individuals. and. Uh, can't do that at your house, can't do that next door to a church either. It's just not realistic. I, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> I want to do, whenever I reach that point, I want to be in a walkable environment. I would, I would love to be in Old Weathersfield. I think it would be a little challenging to convince other people to put it there, but you know, downtown Hartford is my current intention. So, Rich, that's two years out. Yeah, I guess I I waver back and forth between being entirely comfortable and slightly uncomfortable with this, depending on, you know, which part of it we're talking about. I understand that you're not going to have a brewery in your barn. Yeah. I understand that you're not going to have the roll-up side trucks in and out of your barn all day long. I guess I just wanted to get, you know, some sense, you know, a little more definitive sense sure. of, you know, how many trips in and out per day you anticipate making. I'm not overly concerned about the hours, you know, for the reasons you stated. It's just, you know, is it going to be four or 30? Um, oh, you know. Yeah, so, okay. So, you know, it's 30, like, oh, crap, I got to go to the right? old town. Oh, no, I have to go to, you know, I have to go to Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, no, I got to go to, you know, McKinnon's. Oh, no, I got to, you know. Completely fair. So, so, so Mr. Kerr, just, just, <laughs> speakers yeah, I know. Um, just because the questions he's asking are going to help put a box around this. It, if we yeah. make a, a, you know, a move toward approving this, we're going to try and control it. So understand I, that that's I how you're using I actually welcome that those. because, like I said, the, the regulations don't say do this. And I am a neighbor. First and foremost, I'm a resident of the town, but I have neighbors who I have to see on a regular basis. And I, I actually like them. So I'd like to keep it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and there was a period of my life where I listened to the clanging of kegs, yeah. you know, 24-7. Yeah. Um, but living in Wethersfield is not one of those environments. So, I mean, I, we just kind of want to make this as invisible yeah. to the world as possible, but still allow you to do what you need to sure. do. I'm so, saying, oh. What you're proposing is really at the top of what we're looking at as a home occupation. You're at the borderline, and that's the problem. Uh, when we, list, we look at home occupation, we'll have someone will come in, they're going to have an accounting office, or someone's going to have a beauty sure. parlor, they have one client at a time, uh, you know, one car coming. You know, it's, this is going to the limits of what I think with the intention of this zoning regulation calls for, and that's why we're really looking at this. Yeah. So please understand, it's... Uh, well, I, mean, I don't see it as the limit because he's not going to have people coming there. He's not going to have other people in and out and parking. It's just I know he's got to, you know, go to beer events. He's got to, you know, service the Hartford County accounts and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I just wanted to, to get some quantifiable sense of how many Certainly. trips. Now, to answer that question, I obviously don't know. I have, I have 30 or 40 places I know that will take my beer now, um, that's certainly not enough to build a business on. That said, 
if I am running out to Wild Wings and then coming back and then going to Wooden Tap, right, I don't deserve to be in business. It won't last long. I have two vehicles I've looked at for being my quote unquote delivery van. But here's the thing. The last thing I want to do is be a delivery guy. That's the last, like personally, in my life, I worked at United Technologies doing outsourced accounts payable operations. I had a team of 60 some odd people offshore. That's what I was professionally doing before I got into process improvement, where I just basically laid people off. It was a pretty horrible job. So that being my, my professional context before this, I don't want to then go sitting in a van and delivering kegs. That is a monotony that would put me in the grave. I want to build my brand. So that's why I have already contracted a third party distributor to do the heavy lifting, so to speak. If I reach a point where I have enough volume that I can source that volume, give up some of my, my market, my margin, then I am the first, I'm on, take it. But I need to build those accounts personally. And I get a little higher margin for doing it myself and doing the delivery myself early on. So I would suspect I probably wouldn't have time in a day to do more than five trips. And that's, that's I'm really, and that's thinking with a regular, like, a, I'm taking the, my current van. I have an E350. That's too big. I want a little, like, a, like a 250, you know, like a normal size van, something that's a little bit more comfortable to drive. And, but that can hold, I don't know, 20 kegs? I don't know. I, I really, I don't, I mean, I truly don't know the number because it depends on where those locations are I'm driving to. If I can't sell anything in Middletown, then I, I'm not driving south. Um, and I really, I would think that doing five trips would be a 10 hour day. I'm assuming it's, I, I couldn't even imagine that being right. And uh, you're typically selling two logs or, which is the five gallon kegs, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, minimum to any location. So if you want to think about that, you say you fit um, 20, 25 of those on a, in a van pretty comfortably, weight wise. So if you're thinking if, if that's uh, 10 to 15 locations, yeah, 50, that would be a total of 50 locations in one day. If I'm doing that well, I'm already building my new brewery. That's, that's a lot of beer actually. I wouldn't, that would be more than I could do. Yeah. That cooler can't hold. That. Yeah, it couldn't hold that much. Yeah, that's, uh, and, and at the same time, to further say, I will also be picking up beer from Thomas Hooker and distributing. This is for like, if I need to go to, to Middletown first thing on a Tuesday and do a run, well, Middletown's not right because that's New Haven County, but uh, Cromwell and around Weathersfield here, I'm going to do it from my house and not drive up to Bloomfield and pick up the beer there. Um, and then deliver. So, um, you know, I don't know if I can make you feel better, but geez, five trips would be an no, awful that, lot that, of beer. That did make me feel better. Yeah, it's oh. an awful lot of beer. Five. I, I, I mean, I, I, I wasn't overly concerned, but I thought it was important that you articulate it for sure. everyone. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I, and an expectation is that you're doing the loading inside the garage. It looks like yeah. that opportunity exists. Yeah. Um, it's hand trucks and. I'll probably be in a little better shape by the time this is all over. So. And it'll do it. I guess I was asking, um, what's the temperature range of the cooler? Because won't there have to be a condenser somewhere? It's what? built into it. It runs off a regular outlet. Okay. It was a. It's not. It's okay. Yeah, I got. I bought it from an edible arrangements, um, <laughs> and it's just a regular yeah. walk-in cooler that um, runs on a 110. I was shocked myself. I had no idea, no previous experience. So um, if that's not 100% accurate, I'm sure that's something that the building department is going yeah, to take gonna... care of because ha there's a ceiling condenser thing, but it's built into the ceiling. I don't, I don't know all the details because I'm not a refrigeration guy. Eventually, there's got to be an exhaust somewhere. Over right, probably a drain. <laughs> no, so it has a lock on it, right? Oh, it has a lock. I, by law, it has to be locked. So that's yeah. the other thing is... This, the federal, I have a federal permit already, so I have requirements on a federal and on a state level to know where everything is at every given moment and record it back to the government because they want their seven bucks a keg. Both the state and the fed, they want their seven bucks a keg, period. They don't care about anyone else. <laughs> so. George. 
Yeah, uh, item two here. It shall be operated entirely within the confines of the dwelling. Yep. How do you define dwelling in our regulations? Yeah, if, if you see... Not you, him. Oh. <laughs> You're pointing to me, George, just for the record? Pointing to you, Peter. I'll give you the definition from the your regulations. regulations. As you interpret, have interpreted that. <coughs> well... A wood interpret that. You, you, you in other words, is the barn a do, part of a dwelling? I don't think so. Right. Except we have well, well, you, you can right. well, you right. grant you can grant you know the relief that he's asking so. for as part of the application. The dwelling is defined in your regulations as any building or portion thereof which is designed or used for residential purposes, such as the upstairs of this. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't it the case that if he meets all these things, he doesn't have to be Correct. here, and he's only here because he doesn't meet he all doesn't these meet those. He doesn't meet all the requirements. Right. Well, and I think as I wrote it in the spirit of the of the regulation, and I look, this is the way I read it, in the spirit of the regulation is inside the dwelling, meaning you're not uh, stacking lobster pots outside and making a visible difference to the neighborhood, right? Everything is contained. It isn't, uh, the business isn't being run outside. It's not a vineyard. It's not a, I don't know. Couldn't think of what else, but uh, just that it's interior inside of the house, and therefore to your neighbors, as far as you can tell, it's, you know, regular house. So you know, just brought something to mind. You'll have empty kegs probably coming back too, right? And I assume not in my house. No, I want them at the brewery because I don't have the cleaning equipment or any of that. It goes back to the brewery. Well, just you know, if you're swapping one out at some place, they're going to come. Oh back yeah, and, a handful for the, for of the guests, day. but then right, again, right, they'd right. be inside. So. Inside is where I was heading. Thank you. Oh yeah, certainly. Yeah. Well, they're also expensive. I don't want to leave them outside. Uh, Does this that, estate have... How far from the church? I don't know actually. Is there any issue with that? Peter? I mean, this is once again one of those unusual. I mean, uh, requests that uh, you know they're not. It, it's not like a a bar or a restaurant where he's actually dispensing it directly from the property, which is normally what those regulations really are focused upon. Um, and he's certainly not, I mean, I guess the question you would have to consider is whether his business is going to impact the ability for the church members to practice, uh, as defined in your regulations, religious expression. I, I mean, something in a garage, I think you would find, or barn hard, you, that you don't even know is there, I don't think that's going to impact. I mean, that's the, what you would have to consider, and I obviously, obviously I don't think it would impact it in that respect. Yeah, I mean, there's no retail sale component. I no. mean, if he was a wine broker doing it entirely from his living room, it would be, you know, functionally the same, and no one would know that that was what was happening. Does, does the state have any regulations regarding security? What he can do is just... You're, you're storing kegs there. Yeah. And, and the cooler has to be, there's regulations regarding the cooler and its lockability. And of course, I have to be able to lock the building. And that's generally, there's a camera, you know, but I'll have, uh, as operating a business, I, I have each keg, those stainless steel kegs, they cost, you know, 80 bucks a pop. So the little $5, the five gallon ones are 80 bucks a pop. Uh, so, that between that and and the actual completed product i don't want anyone anywhere near my property there will be lights actually there are lights i shouldn't say there will be lights the lights i have on my barn right now my motion sensitive there will be a camera several i don't want anyone even thinking that it's there i mean i <laughs> what about a security system uh if it's required happily to do it i i don't have any i mean that's that's I don't know if I need it. I have three police officers living around me. People are really nice in my neighborhood. Well, that's, I'm just concerned. Not necessarily, yeah. just thinking out loud. Yeah, it's fair. It's unusual to have in residential areas storage of alcoholic beverages, that's all. And you don't live near Ryan. Yeah, I was, was going to say, say. that. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that I'm listening to you guys, I'm going to put security system in anyway. <laughs> it's going to be known. Five, five. Be known. Yay, watch it, watch it. I'm on you. <laughs> Yeah, no free samples. Uh, additional questions? Uh, this is a public hearing. Are, are you folks are probably for the next one, right? Yeah. 
So I guess there's nobody from the public that wants yeah. to comment. I don't see any of my neighbors. Which no, is good. no comments from neighbors or anything. We got a, we got a f couple of phone calls. Uh, we had one uh, neighbor from across the street who was going to submit some comments, but uh, they never uh, materialized. Uh, there were a couple of uh, not folks within 300 feet, but a couple of people who called when they saw the sign out front. But uh, obviously, uh, once they understood what was being proposed, they either you know were unavailable or didn't feel it warranted providing any comments so we we got actually zero comments I think you got comments from the fire marshal uh, you got a memo from from Denise uh, I think those are the two All right I think you got a fire marshal or, no he never did anything he never commented on that we did we did consult with the fire marshal and we were concerned that uh, you know having a, the the uh, cooler in the uh, wood frame garage a barn was a concern but he didn't have a concern about that once he understood um, you know the, the what the cooler was all about so um, no other comments for the record do we need to deal with um, any signage intended signage on the vehicle if the vehicle is just your plane well, on the vehicle whatever I, I, I was I would have put signing on my vehicle if I had my druthers but if that's the problem but I, I don't know I well. think people have signage on their vehicles in the neighborhood anyway right there's no well. I don't think there's a regulation against <laughs> Joe's plumbing having a sign. Yeah, don't, don't there, actually, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there is. Uh, yeah. There is. is there? That's why I'm asking. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I, I, I personally don't have any signing now, but I would totally put signage on my vehicle. So I'd like to know if that's illegal. You would need to ask. Okay. That's fair. Well, he'll look it up. He'll look it up. You plan to park it inside anyway, right? Inside or right behind it. I've got a parking pad right behind it, too. Um, but yeah, not visible from the road. I don't want to advertise there. I don't want anyone to know what I'm doing, <laughs> except for all of you people on the public record. Are you going to maintain your property a little better? I'd love to. If you had a job. I mean, like the driveway, for example. Well, so the drive to repair that driveway is about forty thousand dollars. So if oh, if you're if you're expensive. offering, I'm happily fixing. But yes, it, ideally, this will provide me some ability to do so. Uh, we're going to be doing some work fixing up the driveway closer to the house as a result of this by reorienting the garage. But repairing a blacktop driveway that's not going to last is not my intention. So it's going to all come up in the not too distant future. But that's, uh, I guess, comes with revenue. As I previously said, I'm underemployed. Six square, six square feet. So the signage on your vehicle cannot exceed six square feet in area. Yeah. Three, by, Just three so feet by two feet. Well, none of my neighbors have signage because none of them are here today. Okay. <laughs> okay. Other questions to the applicant? All right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I look at this as I'm just so, putting a really big refrigerator in there so I can. We haven't really talked pass about state law. We haven't really talked much about the box is kind of what I was saying before. Um, you know, if all the work is being, all the transfer of product and everything else is being done inside, all of the leftover, if everything is stored inside and all the transfer is happening inside, um, and, and it's going to happen any time, we're not really talking about you know, times a day, any restrictions along that line? Yeah, I mean, and if it's only him, there's, you know, as a practical matter, a finite amount of trips a day that can be done anyway right. to be profitable. Right. I guess I just had one question maybe for Peter. With, uh, with the approval of the upstairs, does this, like, would this approval impact that ability for him to... The only uh, concern I had was whether the fire and building codes, because you've got the if you, like, cause if you had fire rating, that kind of thing. Yeah, but it's a garage, and if it's used for garage, it's going to have to be. If he does, if he ever does but that, but the that apartment, would be like in the future, he may have issues with the building with and fire, the right? With the refrigerator downstairs, correct. That He'd have to deal with. I, I, although I, I didn't get that concern prim from the fire marshal, he didn't seem. I'd be moving out of that space as a business before I would put the apartment upstairs anyway, because that's too much, you know. <laughs> yeah. so it's presently above just storage. It's, it looks like a little apartment. They, uh, whoever the farmer was, 
1956, applied for a boarding, a rooming house there, and clearly built it out, but never got approval. Um, and I guess it was shut down at some point because it's not hooked up to city sewage. So I can't do anything with it as a, you know, until it's hooked to city sewage anyway upstairs. And uh, that's another 10 grand to MDC because of how far off and from the road. So that's why there's a lot of restrictions to really get. <laughs> but, so, but somebody came before us in 12 and got approvals to put something yeah, back that, in you, right? That was me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah so, so we not, have you won't, be, you won't be able to follow up or you won't be looking to follow up on that one oh, no. if you're doing this. No. I think that was the question. Well, I realize, and, and to further expound upon my plan here is that, as you can see, like in my plans, I will be framing out all the walls on the ground floor. I have a perm building permit to do so right now and then insulating, et cetera, because when I was looking into doing that apartment, I have to beat fire marshal code, which is having two layers of uh, half inch sheetrock or fire bar 15 minute fire barrier for the apartment. So there's no way I could ever do that apartment without investing a good amount in the ground floor anyway, which has sort of made this really make more sense is I'm gonna be investing anyway. I might as well really, um, you know, rather than paying rent at the same time, kind of kill two birds and put an improvement into my home rather than pay rent to somebody, so. Last questions, last comments, uh, motion on the hearing? Motion to close. Second. Anybody, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Anybody like to propose a motion? Make a motion we approve application 1935-17-Z as submitted. including and the applicant's narrative presentation during this year. Which for me anyways means all work inside, all activity inside, right? Yeah. And, and, and a vehicle that doesn't say anything unless you're under the six square feet publicizing anything. Right. Other thoughts? Okay, would you consider a time limit? To see how it's going? See yeah, how it's going. Um, also, just the you know, no deliveries, at least from trucks, right? I think we confirmed that. Um, that would be my thoughts, but do we have a second? Yeah. No, and we can build this thing. I guess I'll second it okay. and I'll add that to uh, for consideration. No truck delivery. So, what yeah. is a truck? So, again, the only delivery would come from me, I would bring beer there myself, right? Again. But no, no tractor trailers oh, yeah. with the side gates. Oh, god, no. Uh, and a limitation, <laughs> whatever. To, to As George can attest, my driveway couldn't handle it. So, so let's let's talk about the the time frame. I I was thinking that too. I, I guess I wonder. I mean, you, you mentioned you're on like a two year plan to two to three, but yeah, I don't want to do this for so long. Want to want to give them that opportunity at least, right? So so we're going. You know, if we say yes, we're giving we're letting him make this investment are you going to take it away five years from now or three years from now so that's that's well i, I guess well he's gonna know going in if we put a timeline on him. yeah you can yeah. impose additional restrictions on me at any time down the line too right yeah i mean that that's kind of what i was thinking is yeah. that if things are not as they were represented to us you know three years from now we will be able to rein it back into what was represented to us um i mean or, or everybody will know that there's a problem before then and it'll be you know kind of a show cause situation and it sounds to me what he's presenting in his personal sentiment about this whole project in business in general he doesn't make it in three or five years he's going to be doing other consulting <laughs> it's Difference. certainly my That's wife would kick my butt so, so it's not like we're going to do an injustice to him but like we're not yeah. pulling the carpet out of front because he's got to know. Exactly I welcome what he's it. Do. I welcome you guys. If you want to review this plan after a year for continued, uh, that'd be tough to have to give up after a year. But if you want to potentially place additional restrictions, that means I'm not being a good neighbor exactly. and my intention is to be a good neighbor. So. So, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, I, I like the idea of you know putting something definitive, no truck deliveries, right? Uh, yeah. Sort of in a, in a broad statement. Um, 
in a time frame? I, I, I certainly can be convinced you guys. Yeah, I mean, frankly, I, I'd be, I, I'd suggest three years because I think we've already heard what all of the kind of self-imposed conditions and parameters are. And if, you know, if those are being blatantly violated, we'll know before the three years are up, but in, you know, three years, if something is, you know, problematic either to us or to him, you know, we'll be able to review it and, you know, maybe he'll be at the next level by then anyway and it'll be moot. Yeah, I think the record is clear as to what he intends to do and we have enough on the record to make sure that it's being done. <laughs> Come back to me. <laughs> I'm fine with the three years is fine with me. He's well aware of it. He's, yeah. he's on board with it. Okay. Right. And so would I. So is that, so that's part of the motion? You got two yep. additional things in the motion? Just my comment on it with a, what is it, 12 by 8 cooler? 12, yeah, 12 by 9. I don't think those are exterior dimensions. Yeah, but. Yeah. You can't make a living with a 12 by whatever size cooler he's got. No. You've tried? Solid beer. You've tried? Fact. <laughs> you speak from experience? You can't even supply Jim Hughes record, with but that I, size. I <laughs> might have that much storage space already as a home brewer. So. It's a three-day weekend for <laughs> some people. <laughs> Excluding St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a whole other <laughs> cooler. All right. So we've got a motion with several. Everybody understand what they are? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Opposed. All right, George. Yeah. Congratulations. You convinced me. All right. Thank you. I, I don't know. It, I, I hope it's a benefit to the town because that's partly why I'm doing all this. Uh, you know, I went down to the the tree lighting ceremony this year and I, I had went to a little beer tent and I'm like well I'm doing this next year because it could be better and I'm going to give it to cost because for me why not right like that kind of stuff so, so, will, you know. so will we see this as boondoggle or you will as see Hartford. it as boondoggle yeah right. I wasn't sure if it was that or Hartford Room yeah, yeah that's my uh, I, said, I, have, I have some cards if anyone wants this <laughs> so we just want to know where they're going. I just want to know where they're going. We need any stinking cards. Support local. If anybody wants to, my logo cards. There, that's my logo. What does it say on the back? Owner. Two for one, free. No, it's just owner. If anybody else wants it, I have a More importantly, where are you going to? That's the logo. So that's where you. That's what you're going to buy, right? George, this that is the beer company. Huh? No, that's not, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. 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 No, name, right? Nine votes. Nine votes. So is Whipper doing the beer to your specifications? Is this? If I if I contract them, yes. But they are yes. definitely one of the sure. countries I'm talking about. So you work with eight, them eight, too. It's not. I will be on site with them, making sure they sure. were exactly my beer, but just. Which your beer time. may be a little bit different than their beer. It's not going to. Oh, it's very different than their beer. Yeah. Yeah. Which is actually why I may not work with Whipper because we're on a different. Hmm? Whatever it is, I just wanted to get a curious. Yeah. yeah. So this is uh, it's called contract brewing. It's a. Uh, yeah, that's what a lot of people do. I never heard. Yeah, a lot of people do that. All right, let's move on to the next item. Um, just for confirmation, George, you were the one who opposed, and you were the only one that opposed. George. Yes. George, you were the only one that opposed, right? What? Yeah, I'm the only one opposed. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. I eight, think. eight to one. All right. I was opposed. That's pretty tough. Right <laughs> All right, uh, other business, <laughs> item 4.1, a pre-application review. Uh, Natalia Pedra, please join us at 1912 Berlin Turnpike. Thank Hello. You for, thank, thank you for waiting so long. <laughs> my, my name is Natalia Pedra. Um, we're looking to get pre-approval for our business at um, 1912 Berlin Turnpike in Weathersfield. Um, my father currently owns a business in Meriden in the Berlin Turnpike as well. It's the same business. It's called Stonehouse. It's a granite countertop business. And right now it's a vacant lot um, owned by um, Dino Carabestos. I don't know if I'm butchering his name. He owns um, Elaine's. Um, so we're looking to purchase it from him. Um, we're under deposit waiting for the pre-approval. Um, of our business so we're looking to move not necessarily that business my father plans on retiring 
and my brother and I would be taking over the business. Um, we've been in business for over 12 years. I've been in there since the beginning, since day one with him. And he's looking to retire. I would be taking over with my brother in the Weathersfield location, and we would be closing the Meridone one. Um, it would be a retail showroom, um, and it would be a retail business. Um, the showroom would be in the front, and it would have um, the kitchen lay, a kitchen sample, a vanity sample, like a display area. Um, it would have some samples of backsplashes, stainless steel sinks, um, just the things that we sell, and um, a reception area for our guests, um, a sales area, and the back would be um, where we would customize the counters. Um, we use um, dust-free water tool so it doesn't create any dust, any noise, or anything. Um, and outside we're looking to store the slabs that we use um, and where our clients would be able to handpick their own slabs. Um, they would be sitting on A-frames. Um, that way the clients would walk around. We have the same kind of thing in Meriden now. Um, we just don't have as much space. Um, right now what we have there is like a very simple drawing. We kind of just have like a plain building. Um, this would be a major investment to our family, um, to me really and my brother. Um, we're a small family owned business. So we did this and then we're going to do everything very slowly. So our next step, once we get like our business approved, we would give you a more detailed and we're open to changes and the size of the building. We're hoping to have a 6,000 to 7,000 square feet building. Um, the land's approximately 30,000 square feet, um, but we're not sure of the sizes yet. Because right now it's just so early on. Um, we're kind of doing things, we're thinking it's gonna take us about four years to build everything. Um, so this year we're just trying to do the drawings up and the buildings and everything else. And then next year we would build the foundation clean it up, and then the following year, build the building, and then the last year, we would move in. And um, I think that's basically it. I think I added a letter. I don't know if you guys all have copies. Yes, which kind of explains the same things that um, I'm going over now. Um, and that's really it. Where, where would you be um, putting the A-frame structures? It would be like, so it would be the building and it would just be the parking lot. It would be outside, like out, on some. Where, where? When you're looking out at the building, side, outside where? right. Yeah, when you're right. looking at the new building, outside right. The left side, yeah. Be between you and the other buildings? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to. We can fence it in. Um, I just know that the gentleman that was over by there years ago had two slabs pushed over by kids one night. Oh, no, doing. no, no. Ours would be, we're, ours is gonna be like, I think, I think the requirement was 5,000 square feet, like between the buildings. We're gonna have way more space between the building to begin no, it with. it was just a matter of that people could walk in there. Oh, no. be crushed by the slabs. By no, the no, no. Everything's on A-frames. Everything's tied on ropes and secured. Like, we have that already. I mean, we could have it gated if that's something that you guys require. Um, we don't have it gated right now. It's their product. Um, the slabs are pretty heavy, unless they're like I know, it really unsecured. Yeah, I know, because it freaks me. I yeah. Me people knocked it over. No, no, it's very hard because they're so heavy. Yeah. It's very hard for you to like knock it over. I like I work there. For me, I even get freaked out walking in between. But yeah. it's very hard. The problem where that lies is usually like the suppliers of the slabs. They're moving slabs all day. That's more. So when they're moving slabs is like more of a dangerous part, but we would never have anybody there when they're moving slabs, like in the area. So like if my guy is taking a slab out of a rack to bring it inside, I would never have clients outside. It wouldn't be near like the parking area or anything like that. Um, the building shown on the plan here, um, which is proposed, I guess, approved prior to this, right, Peter? No, you, um, there's a, they, they've submitted just a preliminary plan with the proposed structure. There was a previously approved plan. I don't know if that 
was included in your packet for a different uh, develop. If you remember, Mr. DiFilippo, he had two different prop two different buildings proposed on this structure. Right. Yeah. So this plan is completely different than that. So in other words, the building is not going to cover maybe the same area that, that no. this one does. I mean, no, this is what so this is what they are proposing on a preliminary this is what basis. Yes, this it's is a, their proposal. It's I see a there. fifty by one hundred and fifteen. Yeah, and footprint. again, that's not final. Like we're gonna work with it and see. Once we get like an architect, it's just we were trying to get give you guys a basic idea to see if we can get a pre-approval. Like I said, this is a major investment. Once it is final, we're gonna work with the architect and see exactly and um, no, what no, best fits. No noise or dust. You said there's no dust or it's noise free. Even um, though you're cutting, right? Even though we're cutting, because they're water tools so it's all cut with water so it doesn't create any dust or any noise um, I mean we're in Meriden now we've never had a complaint um, when we were on the other side of Meriden we moved buildings like across the street we were actually behind like a ton of houses and now we're not any near any homes and they never complain so I mean if people Regular people aren't complaining. I doubt. Yeah, this in the is a Berlin's good location room. with no homes around it. Exactly. Like we think be. it's just perfect. There's a lot of like home improvements. It's like a home design business, and there's like carpets there. There's tiles there in the same area. We just think we would fit in, and we really want to stay in the Berlin Turnpike. Um, we just rather well, be on this you're side. You're not only on the Berlin Turnpike. You're at a major east-west interchange there, 175. Definitely. With, right <laughs> at the end of the ramp. In fact, yep. This is an excellent location for you to locate. I, yes. I would think. Yeah. We're very, oh, we're fortunate. very hopeful that this will be good for us. We're very excited. Good. It should be. As yeah. <laughs> ahead, James. In Meriden, where are you currently on the Berlin Turnpike? We're all the way down. So it's not even called Berlin Turnpike where we are. It's called North Broad Street. But if you go all the way down to the Berlin Turnpike. Are you on the northbound side? A northbound side. The northbound. Not on the or coming from New Haven. It's like kind of coming. What's the address? What's the address? Across from statewide recovery? Yes. You know where the auction is? Yep. Right. Where they That's statewide. Yes. Right we're near there. Yes. Yep. We're before a little bit. But we're near there. We're on the other on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, so there's you have competitors in Newington right near Kitchen Express because there's a slab yard right yep. in the back. Yeah, the yard's not fenced in either. Yeah, a lot most of our competitors yard. don't have anything fenced in. Like I said, if it's a requirement, we're very we're open to working with the town whatever you guys want us to do. But most of them aren't. And we do want to have a very nice building. Obviously, that's our work. We have to make everything look nice yeah. so that's, 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 yeah. we can pull our clients in. So, <laughs> As you say, you're backed up to a wood area or swamp. Actually, I, I call them swamps still, but uh, the wetland behind. You know, yeah. The yeah. fact that it comes up to we the edge of your parking structure. Just from the viewpoint of property. traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in good shape there, plus the interchange. Yes. And there might be another building someday, theoretically, uh, to the right of you, right? Another one, maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can well, there's probably about four stone yards in between Northeast Utilities and your location right now. There are? Uh -huh. There's Catskill. There's uh -huh. Catskill. None, I mean, I think... Hey, I think right. ours will be, like, the prominent hey, one in the Berlin too. Turnpike where we'll have, like, the slabs outside and mm -hmm. it'll really... Because I think all the other ones are kind of tucked in a little bit. The kitchen one's a little... But I think ours is just going to be a very visible, visible, yeah, exactly. Right. There's no none of the other ones are that visible. So yeah, I mean, and, and I guess that would, frankly, would be my only concern about how visible the outdoor storage of materials is. I mean, notwithstanding what's across the street, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we had permitted that, you know, it would be a different story, as opposed to having it just be there. It wasn't. Uh, are talking about the stones over there? Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, we're not going to have, like, you know, a ton of, it'll probably be, like, I don't know, I'm going to say, like, five rows of, you know, a few slots. It's not going to be, five like, all, yes, exactly. It's not going to be, like, just a huge, we don't want it to look like it's, like, an industrial park. We want it to be very, like, a retail kind of experience. We want customers to be able to walk around it, pick their own slabs, but not have, like, so much, it's not good to have that many slabs because it's kind of overwhelming too for us and for the client. So we're not looking to make it look like too. Yeah, I mean, and, and 
you know, trying to make the Berlin Turnpike into something that it isn't, you know, isn't going to work. No, no. And we understand the kind of businesses that that want to be there, but by the same token, you know, having everybody on the Berlin turn, Turnpike dragging all their crap out into the yard to show to the world, you know, kind of sends the wrong message. Could you could you speak to the number to the traffic that comes in and out of your place? What would you expect? It, it looks like you've obviously set up only five parking spaces. It's very, very light. Like I would say, I get in maybe three to four people a day. Really, a lot okay. of our work is with contractors too. So our contractors, they don't even need to come in. To really, they already know our colors. They have our samples. They have samples set up in their like home office for their own clients when they're building a whole subdivision. So they don't even go there. They kind of just make an order through the phone. We go template. They don't even go there. So really, what we get is mostly homeowners. Obviously, that area is a busier area. We're hoping to get more hmm, right. uh, but traffic the, there. I, I um, have this. I have the same perception of your type of business. Uh, Peter, Peter, is that going to be something that we can work with in terms of the... Definitely. I think, I mean, uh, you know, the, uh, what's the percentage between the size of the showroom retail versus the work area in the back? Mm, I think I kind of is it 50-50, 75-25? Because that's um, probably what we would use for the parking calculations. The number of workers. The retail. It's less, yeah. It's probably like 70 Okay. Like the work area, 70, 30. But then okay. there's like a reception area, and yeah. not a reception area, like a break room area in between. So, okay. So, so, so kinda, the, the work yeah. area is much bigger than the Yes, retail. it is. It's much bigger than the showroom yep. and the okay. retail area. Yep. The retail area is really going to have like maybe, a, and it's not like a full kitchen either. It's just like the sink area, mm -hmm. really maybe an island, and then like a couple vanities. It's not like a bunch of kitchens. And how many employees? Six. I mean, if you include my brother and I, there are the owners. Six at the peak time. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're a small company. My okay. brother and I both work there. I do like the office manage stuff, and he does, you know, the installations, the templating, the back work. So. Okay. So as you develop the plan, we would just need to make sure there's enough parking for yes. all of your employees, and then yes. whatever, probably a handful of spaces, maybe five or six for the. Yeah, we would work on that. I think we just kind of drew it yep. up, and however, yep. we didn't really put the right mm -hmm. quantity just so you can have an idea of what we were thinking. But, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I feel like we do definitely have enough room to put yes, more definitely. parking spaces. Yep. Uh, Tom, uh, I hate to put you on the spot, and I don't like doing this for the commissioning, but yeah, do you right. see any issues DOT might have here considering the interchange and what you might be doing to the bridge and all that stuff in that area? You know, it we don't own the prop. DOT doesn't own the property, so there's very little we could say. But that was the gist of my question about the traffic, et cetera. You know, if if we're talking about <clears throat> six employees coming and going, and you know, ten ten drive-ins, that's not a lot of traffic over the course of a day. So it makes me feel better as a DOT employee at the moment. Yeah, I mean, and it was a gas station, right? So yeah, no, I just wonder if you're going to bit really read be revamping potentially in the future well, we are but again you know the state doesn't own the property so it is what I know it you're is going to redo the bridge at one point 10 yeah. years ago yep i don't think any of the uh, proposals came and uh, would have would have been acquiring this whole property by any stretch or anything so um how about helping the uh property owner or potential property owner you know plan for the landscaping and whatnot and there seems to be a lot of opportunities so there's a lot of there's a lot of room for blacktop up there that w wouldn't look. Yeah, no, I think as I say, this is a, pr a preliminary plan. So you know they've made a preliminary effort to put some trees in there. So we would work uh, uh, closely with whoever the final designer is to come up with it. Yeah, we have we have certain landscaping requirements and yeah, and we definitely like stuff, I said so. for us, we just wanted to make sure that this kind of business would be approved and what we're looking for, you know, base would be approved before we made any major investment with an architect because anything for us is a major investment and we want to make it look nice. That's why we want to take our time and I said we're going to do this in a span, you know, of a few years just because we'd rather do it slowly and we're good where we are right now until, you know, we move in. We're good with the re with um, the lease. We have a few, t um, few years until we have to move out, which is exactly what 
we're looking for because we'd rather do something nice and take our time. I mean, the way we look says everything about our work. You know, our clients, that's what they're looking at. They want to redo their kitchens. If we have like a messy place, they're going to think we do a messy job, you know. What is the name of your place? Stonehouse Granite. So the only thing as you lay this out in the future, if you look at the plan, there's a, a contour line of 230 uh, foot elevation. Be, beyond that, the property drops off probably seven or eight feet. The back corner of your building is basically shown right adjacent at the bottom of that contour. So if there's any way of moving the building or shortening up, moving it a little further, because uh, there's a pretty defined wetland back there and the property looks like it was filled and then it drops off right there. So you may have to just modify, yeah. push everything a little bit forward, stay away from that contour, give yourself a little distance from the wetland back there because it's not just a, it's almost a pond back there. So yeah. Um, yeah, once more we, of a square than a rectangle. Yeah. Once we have, um, once we do it with the, we have to have someone go out there and measure because I don't yeah. think the measurements here are correct. No, they're not. So even when we went out there and we kind of measured yeah. it again, it didn't match to what we had in the drawings. So we're going to have somebody go out there and properly measure it so yeah. we can do the building properly. And you should probably just ask the property owner to provide you with the documentation that the proper environmental yes they have already okay they have because it was so. a gas station and clearly yes. the site has been worked yeah, by somebody they have given so. us everything good so yeah but don't look too hard because the town owned it at one point <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we tore it down right what that was under kitchen's uh yeah yeah because i did the closing when we sold it to them yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah i think it's a good fit over there i like it yeah me too so what else can we offer this Potential applicant. Anything else? That's, so it sounds like you have, you know, some positive feedback. You know that you know yeah. the type of use would be okay. Just okay. Yeah, come up with the details. Come up with the details uh, that are consistent with our plan. Yep, yeah, that's what we'll do next. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good, Good luck. Uh, minutes not available. Staff reports. Just a couple of things. There's the upcoming um, Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night annual uh, extravaganza coming up. <coughs> so if there are members, I think we have two ZBA members who want to go. So we've already got a couple of people who want to go. So if you do want to go, let us know. Um, it is March. Wednesday, March 23rd. 23rd? Yep. So uh, I know usually we have a couple of people we can get a table, but if you want to go, just uh, send me a note and we will sign you up and provide you with all the uh, details. Um, I won't have to get up in the morning, so the next morning, you mean? <laughs> yeah. All right. So you're I'm buying? In. I'm in. Okay. Yeah, I'm buying too. <laughs> all right. All right. That's wow. Well, I'll go then. Wow. All support. right. <laughs> A couple of things you should know. We had a we had a meet, staff meeting with the uh, developers of the uh, Clearinghouse Auction Gallery property. They did come in some time ago uh, <coughs> and made a, a pr pre preliminary uh, proposal to you. Uh, it's been quiet. So I was wondering about why you know they haven't been in touch with Mr. Kerr. Yes. Uh, yeah. It doesn't. Uh, not a, not heading that way. Not heading that way. Um, so they are. That is active again. There were some legal. A snafu there that they they are hopefully uh, working out in a pretty timely manner so that uh, should be coming in um, maybe as soon as March um, we've been very busy talking with a whole bunch of small businesses so I think you're gonna start getting um, pretty busy in the next uh, two months which is obviously good news there is a new proposal uh, potentially for the Weight Watchers uh, project they have uh, hired uh, design team and a lawyer to represent them. We met with them uh, last week. Uh, so that, um, I mean, they still have to do surveying and, you know, so that, that's a ways away. But nevertheless, there is a team of people looking at that. So we'll keep you posted on that. It may be a partial demolition and reuse, but we'll see what the final details hold. Uh, the Ridge Road project is sort of partially under construction. They are probably, just so you know, going to have to do some blasting with the ledge there. Uh, when they modified the plan to settle the lawsuit, 
and to, to bring the building down in elevation, uh, I think the, some of the foundation work um, may require some blasting. So they're working that out with the fire marshal uh, right now and uh, getting their demolition uh, permits um, in order. Um, I believe somebody purchased the old um, uh, Crack School on um, at the corner of Jordan Lane and is it Ridge Road? Oh, from the state, it was available through the state. state? Yeah, they offered it to the town, and we had no, we had no interest. So we had a gentleman come in here, and I think he's already uh, acquired it, and he hadn't even done a whole bunch of research on it, which was um, surprising to me, but nevertheless, uh, so that, that may, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what, um, no, I'm never, I'm never surprised anymore. Uh, well, he doesn't know yet, so um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it, I mean, it could potentially be apartments or condos, but, but it's not, it's not, it's not zoned for it. So uh, there's details, details. So it's residentially, single family residentially zoned. Family. Single family, yeah. Single family. Yeah, so. Uh, so there's been a lot of things um, over the last couple of days going on. So uh, as I say, I think you're going to be pretty busy in the in the very near future. So That sounds positive. Good. Yeah. Anything else? I'd love a motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Thanks, Rich. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, I was getting thirsty. Yeah,